Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Cole Region from Scranton the Pine Grove, the Glen Burn Mountain to the Pioneer Tunnel, and all you good news in between. This is your hardcore head your hardcore historian. Sorry guys, it's been a long day. Uh Joey the Ginley Jr., you know who I am. And uh well, let's just get into the nitty-gritty here, yeah. So uh I was I spent the whole day milling how I was gonna go about doing this. I initially, based on my amazing uh, find or my my realization that I came to last night regarding this guy here, I actually was just going to do a video all about that, but uh, I figured I uh, I would be doing I'd be doing the community a, a severe disservice by uh, not brief by you know not briefly showing my first Indian artifact finds a 2023 off and, uh, you know, going blow by blow, uh, listing, uh, point after point, uh, and, you know, offering pieces of evidence that these are actually stone tools and not naturally worn rock, uh, like some of the, uh, the separatists in the comment section seem to uh, believe that they are. So let's uh, let's just get into uh, the nitty gritty here. So come back to you in a couple minutes. We're just going to go over this stuff briefly. All right. So when you look at this one here, nothing too unassuming, right? I mean, if you really think about it, the average person wouldn't look at that probably and say, "Oh, that's a that's a tomahawk." Okay, but you know, once you start to get a keen eye for things, you know, like for example, anytime you see notched out areas like that, you know, I mean, obviously that could be natural, but, uh, you know, trust me, by the time we're done showing you all the evidence here, uh, I will have proven my case beyond a reasonable doubt, I think. So. If you just find it like this, nothing too unassuming. I would pick it up and take it home, all right? But when you flip it over to the other side, this is what made me pick it up in the first place. It's literally covered in all these weird, round circles, like perfectly round circles. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, now I found these out at Stony Brook Creek. Check that out. So, what is that? It's a fossil. What, what that kind of fossil is it, Joey? All right, well, I'm just going to go over it briefly, Carl, okay? Uh, so, the type of uh, creature that this would have been, it was a marine invertebrate called uh, crinoid. Crinoid. Yeah, a crinoid. Okay, crinoid. Crinoids are in the same family as, like, starfish. What kind of place is this? Sea urchins. Sand dollars. Which I had no idea were actually living things. So, what's interesting about these is that they're, the nickname for these things are sea lilies. It's because they look like flowers in the water, even though they're not flowers at all. So, without going into, you know, a deep dive on the history of these things or anything... Basically, what you need to know is that uh, these things only live submerged in water. Okay, these will uh, anchor themselves uh, into the soil of a vast inland sea, and uh, you know, and then would feed, would just wobble around there, and that's how it live its life, eating and doing its thing. Okay. Um, what you're seeing here, all right, so uh, one website said that the best way you could really sum up what a uh, crinoid was, that it was a starfish on a stick, okay? And basically what you're seeing here is the remnants of the stick. The stick, the, the, uh, the stem was consisting, uh, it was uh, made up of, I think they're called columnules or something like that. And uh, kind of like, you know, those uh, tropical trees 
that bend, you know, they, they have to be able to bend certain ways. It allows them to, to move with the ebb and flow. Well, that's what you're looking at here. You're looking at the, uh, the remnants of some ancient sea life. Now, well, wait a minute, Joe. You said you found this in Bloomberg. And, uh, I mean, that's, 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 you're in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains there, buddy. Long and short of it is that, uh, the vast inland sea that used to cover, uh, that, that North America was submerged under at one point, uh, ended up being on the front lines of a upheaval and, uh, basically, what was once the bottom of these shallow inland seas was now the t at the tops of mountains. What you're looking at here, right, is the sea bottom of a shallow sea that existed between 400 and 500 million years ago. That's how long ago uh, these animals, or these... Uh, creatures were, existed and if you if you see here it's I mean it's you can see that it's uh little pebbles over here and you can see more dead plant life and, and more, like you can see more like there's more debris and plant life under there like you could just you're basically looking back in time I mean it's like I'm putting my hand on the bottom of the sea floor 500 million years ago. How friggin' awesome is that? Now, okay, so moving on in regards to this, that's that bolsters my uh, I think feel that I feel that finding that these uh fossils are all over this, yeah. So I, I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, you know, on one side here we have all this. Uh, ancient marine life, and when I mean ancient, I mean some of the oldest to ever exist on the planet, and uh, it just so happens to be on a rock that just so happens to look like an axe. Well, we're about to show you that this is an axe, okay? So, they're, they're forming three-dimensional pinions based on one-dimensional photos. Like with a photo, you just get a flat. Everything's flat. But like, look, when we do this here, we can move this around now. And, uh, when you start moving around, you know, you see like, all right, so you have this notch here, that notch there, same on that side, all right, all right, not just forming there. Now, if you also look, you know, there's some, there's some relative smoothness about this here, you know, that's not smooth from that natural erosion. Natural erosion will be more like, see how that's like jaggedy and bumpy there? No. That's perfectly smooth. All right. Also, the top is, okay, let's see here. No, I mean, let's see, which one? Look at that. I mean, besides a little bump in the middle, that's practically perfectly straight. You know, there's, uh, and on top of it, you can see here, there's, uh, right here it is. It looks like something was in there. Let's see. Something was in there. That's, that's definitely etched out of there. That would have been used to, uh, catch the, uh, leather bindings that, uh, Fasten this uh, axe head into its handle. That's what it is. And then see, look, we ran down when we ran down this side. When we went in the actual, yeah. So, uh, so my the thing about this is though is uh. I mean, compared to like the other stone axe heads that I've ever seen, this is 
very light, like very light. Like it, if I, I feel like if I drop this, it would just break. Um. So that's why I'm believing that this isn't a war club and this isn't a uh, a wood axe. Rather, this is a ceremonial axe. It would make sense uh, because it doesn't seem to, you know, there doesn't seem to be too much care given towards the uh, the actual um, details of things. Um, but, I mean, can you just imagine, you know, an Indian, you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago walking along and finding, you know, a, obviously a bigger rock that has all these things. In it. And what's crazy about it is you can see the eraser compared to the, uh, the fossil itself. The fossil itself is probably about a third the size of an eraser. So you can understand why, with the naked eye, I was having a hard time figuring out what the hell they were. So yeah, um, this is definitely, definitely, again, you know, you're entitled to, you know, you could think this is a tuna fish sandwich if you want to. I mean, this is America. You have a right to, uh, to form whatever opinion you want. But, uh, and that doesn't mean you have to, uh, you know, think it out loud. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is, uh, again, this is going to be the uh, a ceremonial, ceremonial axe. And obviously, it was very, the Indians could not know what these were. Like, they, they, they had no concept of, of, of like, um, of like any kind of evolutionary science or like the, the periods yet box. Like they had no idea about any of that stuff and neither did we really till recently. Um, you know, so when they found this in the ground, they, they looked at it at all and probably saw it as a uh, gift to the gods or a gift from the gods. And that's why it was used for ceremonial acts. I just thought you'd find... Oh, and by the way, I just want to give you an example here of the difference between... Uh, Fossil, the fossil record from my house in Coltmont, which is about 20 miles from where I uh, found this stuff. Okay, so again, so this is mm -mm, the bottom of a you know 450 million year old sea, all right, as opposed to oh, I just dropped some. These are what I find behind my house. These are ferns, and these were on trees that were like 300 feet tall. Anyway, um, these, on the other hand, are about 300 million years old. So these came about 100 million years after the end of these. These couldn't have existed without the uh, death of these uh, creatures at the hands of the... Uh, Tectonic upheaval. So, yeah. Um, aren't those ferns neat, though? Look how, look how crisp they are. Look at that. They are so... I mean, you can still see the veins in them. Yeah, I used to have some better ones than these, too. But... Isn't the next tool I found was... Actually, this is the first one I found. My bad. Yeah, this is the first one I found. All right. Yeah, this uh, was the very first one I found. And again, what what catches your eye at first, nature doesn't do this, okay? Like, it might put a notch in something, but it doesn't, like, notch it and then sand it down perfectly flat. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, uh, it's not getting pretty points. This has obviously been worked by hand. Obviously. I mean, look how flat it is. As opposed to, like, the rocks to the side over here. This has been worked. This. Look. It goes off and take. That's obviously been worked by hand. If you can't see that that's been worked by hand, then, uh, you might want to go make an appointment with a uh, an eye doctor 
and maybe a neurosurgeon because there might be something more just wrong with you and just your eyes if uh, if it's still not registering in your your skull. But we shall continue because there's more. All right, so it's a big one, yeah. All right, so again, so it tape is there. Back, round it off. But not too fancy schmancy about this one. All right, here's the other side of it. Again, the groove stays the whole way through the uh, the axe head, okay? It goes the whole way through there. Right, so, if you can, oh, that's all. Awesome. If you look here, here's the here's this here's the deal sealer right here, because you could you could you could accept that maybe that got flattened and smooth because of weather erosion. Okay, here we go. But check this out, right here. <laughs> look at the top of this thing. I mean, come on, dude, that is perfectly smooth. Perfectly smooth. And it's perfectly straight. And it's perfectly smooth. Nature is not that neat of a of a housekeeper. I'm afraid to tell you that. If you believe that, then yeah, so and this now on the other hand is made of real heavy duty. Uh, rock. I think this might be made of quartzite. And um, you see here in the front, it has the dull head. The, the dull, uh, yeah, the dull head on it. Which means that this is some badass Lenape warriors uh, war hand, or war axe. That's exactly this would have been used for cracking skulls, man. That's a crack, crack, crack. The reason they want them dull and not sharp is because if they were sharp, they'd get, they'd have to, you know, if when they chop them in the in the skull, you know, it would, uh, it it could get stuck in there, you know, um, as opposed to it being dull, it would just cause the, you know, it would cause a, uh, like a, the cave to collapse, as opposed to, uh, you know, causing it to get stuck. So, yeah, that's... Okay, so... Hooligans. Again. Flat and perfectly smooth. And the way it rounds out, though, right? Right? Okay. And then up on top. I have... I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Look at that. I tell you what, if you still believe that these are naturally uh, uh, formed rocks, then uh, I, again, you might want to, you might want to get some kind of, some kind of help because there's something totally wrong with you. Okay, so we'll move on to the last one here because this video is still way longer than I wanted it to be by like 15 minutes, but I just can't help it. So, okay, so again, I caught shit for this one. Oh, it's just a, a regular rock. Okay. First off, you look at it like that. It just Yeah, it just looks like a regular rock. But you gotta look at the depth, okay? Let me show you something here. La, 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 la. Back around last October, over at Nish, and you guys have seen pic or pictures of this, but I found this mortar and pestle uh, together, all right? And... The mortar has a very shallow, but very noticeable bowl, okay, carved in it. And if you look on the sides, all right, and actually, <clears throat> the, if, the, if you are, if you have an Indian artifact that you, like, have gone through all the, the, the checklist and are still wondering whether, you know, that's a, more, a pestle or is that just a, a, a regularly formed rock. Well, 
I've learned that the last trick you could do to uh, make that determination is to try fitting it into your hand and see how well from like all directions it, you can fit it in both hands. And uh, I have found that the artifacts that uh, are man-made fit in the hand perfectly while the ones that aren't don't. Okay, so that's that more of a pestle there. So this is just a small one. This is like like the travel size one. Right? You know, it's uh it's obviously uh has an indentation there. And again, if you look, smooth edges, smooth edges and angling there. Okay. Smooth edges. Oh, look at that. And that's also been worked. You know what I mean? Like, and then look, it comes back around. Oh, look at that. More smooth edges. Oh, and what a coincidence. The whole bottom's perfectly flat. Oh, and what a coincidence. It's also shaped like an arrow. And I'm pretty sure that that's a thunderbolt. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I. Some of you might think that that's a reach, but I have a Thunderbird here that you're about to see. But even if it's not, which it is, but even if it's not, I mean, come on, man. So it's a coincidence that it looks like an arrowhead and has. Perfectly uh, formed edges. Now I'm going to show you this here too. What the hell was it? Bingo. So remember I said about how it fits perfectly in your hand? And I mean perfectly like if you find one from somebody who uh, had a hand size about the same as yours, you'll feel the, your fingers will fit right. Like there are, you'll feel individual grooves. Uh, you know, carve in there to make your fingers settle like perfectly. And that's how this is here. See, you have this part. If that part of my thumb sits there, the fingers go there. Makes sense, right? And then with my right hand, I would use that to grind up stuff in the uh, in the pestle. So again, this is, that is why this is an authentic Native American artifact.